How's it going everyone? My name is John from Random Chivos and today we're going to be talking about something brand new on the channel. I'm going to be talking about Overwatch specifically and the support classes within the game. Now currently we have five, Ana, Mercy, Lucio, Zenyatta, and Symmetra, but of course we might get some more in the near future, so just until now we're just going to focus on these. Now I would like to bring content for every other class in the game as well, such as tank, defense, and offense, but to do so, first I want to know if this is the kind of content you do enjoy and like to see, so please leave a like on the video, and that'll let me know for sure that you really enjoy this, and I will definitely bring new videos coming in the near future. Now before the video begins, I just wanted to state by no means necessary am I a professional at every single character in this game. It's impossible to be, and you never will be, but we can pick the characters that we do enjoy the most and hopefully be able to tone our skills to that tier, highest tier level possible. So that's what I'm trying to do here and then bringing you information that really matters, the game sense that you need for each character and how to play them effectively. So now that that's out of the way, let's just get right into the video. So the first character I'm going to talk about today is Ana, and she's definitely the character of choice when it comes to me playing a support class. I really just enjoy the mechanics that she has to offer and the playstyle behind it. I have decent aim on the computer so it's not a big deal for me and I don't really have any downsides when I play her. However, things that people usually lack with Ana is definitely their positioning, and she's very good on high ground and when, can she, when she can see across the entire point and see the entire team. It doesn't really work matter so much if she needs to be able to see the enemy team, but she just needs to focus on her team so she can be able to heal them. There's a few examples that you're going to be seeing on screen, such as uh, Numbani, first point A. She's great if she sits across on the other side while the team sits on high ground by the first door. Uh, if she sits with a Soldier 76, that's even better because then he can drop a heal station and they can work together. And then also on Temple of Anubis, first point A, if you go all the way to the back, you can actually get up on the top over by the palm tree and shoot your, uh, shoot your team across the map and you can see the entire portion of the capture point and you can easily duck down to the right side and get out of the way if a Tracer or Genji were to come after you. She's also very good on defense, especially on maps such as Route 66 where she can stay with her team and group up with them and have a long field of sight just in case they were to separate her from a little bit because that's what makes Ana fantastic is just being able to shoot across the map and hit her teammates from pretty much anywhere as long as she can see them. So long distance capture maps where they're pushing the payload, she can hit her Genji across the map or Winston, Reinhardt, whoever it may be, and it just makes her the uh, best healer you can to be able to stay out of the fight but still give support to your team. As we all know, Ana was incredibly good during the tank meta. She could just heal up Reinhardt's and Divas like just instantly with her bionic grenade. Um, but I don't know if she works too well with triple DPS. Yes, it is possible, but I would only recommend it saying if you have incredibly good aim with her. Now where Ana seems to falter a lot would definitely be have to be on one CP maps or King of the Hill they would call it. Uh, and that's only because of the fact that there's just no line of sight. All the, uh, all the action always takes place directly on point, and there's so many things blocking your vision, and you can easily get dove from a Tracer or Genji, and then you're pretty much dead at that point. And now you're down a healer, and your team will most likely lose the fight because of it. So I would definitely recommend a Lucio, preferably, or even a Zenyatta on control points. They seem to help out a lot more. And this is 1 CP we're talking about. 2 CP, Ana is good, and I would say mostly on the first point, and sometimes on the second point as well. Now when we're coming to her mechanics and how her abilities work, just don't waste sleep. That's the biggest mistake that most Anas will use. They'll just waste their sleep dart. And the problem is, is that has such a large audio noise that an easily a Winston could jump you now and there's nothing you can do. You can't sleep him, you can't get away, and he pretty much has his free reign on you and most likely will kill you. The same with your grenade too. It can save your life. It can also save your teammate's life. Try to hit a health station if you can, if you really need to heal up or at the same time ask for a soldier to heal you or maybe the other support on your team to be able to help you out. Just save your grenade when it's absolutely necessary because it could save your teammate's life or your very own. And last, a few things to help with aiming with Ana. I would definitely go into your sensitivity and adjust your scope sensitivity to whatever you feel most comfortable with. I prefer 36, but that's just my personal preference. I know some people will use 40, 44 as well, but just find what works best for you and how you have the best aim with. And you can also go into a custom game as well and you can easily go and fight against a whole bunch of other Anas. You can change the settings around where they can't even hurt you at all, and you can just easily shoot them over and over again and just practice your aiming, and especially since the fact that Ana is the only character that has a hit scan and a uh, projectile shot, since when you're aiming or not aiming. And this will just give you a better idea of how to use her properly, especially when you're like saying shooting your teammates on the map, on the point. So next I wanted to focus on Lucio, and I'm sure most of you can agree he's probably the most fun character to use in the game, just being able to jump around and do whatever you want. 
But really, now that Lucio has been nerfed, I guess you could say, or even just reworked to his uh, smaller peripheral where you can actually heal and speed boost, you really need to focus on staying with your teammates now and working more as a team than you could before when you could just run around the map and do basically anything you'd like. But the one mistake that I seem to find most of the time is people pick Lucio and just expect him to heal them all the time. Lucio is almost like a secondary healer. He has that ability, but the main thing that Lucio is used for is his speed boost. Really take advantage of his speed boost to initiate fights or back away from a fight if you feel like something is going wrong so you don't lose every single player on your team and just feed ultimates. And I pretty much would have to say it is entirely necessary every single time, 100% of the time, on one CP or the King of the Hill maps, you have to have a Lucio. If the other team has a Lucio and you don't, you are severely underpowered when it comes to this. The ability to get to point faster than the other team is just amazing and you will, you will notice a complete difference against Lucio on Lucio gameplay. Another thing that's also fun about Lucio is obviously his boop mechanic, being able to push people off the map. Take advantage of this when you're on certain maps where you know you can push people off the edge. Of course, one CP maps have them all the time but also another map like Eichenwald, for example. Switch over to Lucio on the second point. When that bridge comes around, you can easily start pushing the Reinhardt off the map or another DPS or whomever it may be, and that'll really, really help your team, and you might even be able to just hold that point just because of you switching over to Lucio. Now, the best part about Lucio, of course, is his speed, so use your speed by yourself to your advantage. This is like probably the only time I would say you can go off and do something on your own, but you're really not going that far, and that's to speed in behind the enemy team and push someone towards your team so he becomes an easy target. For example, the Reinhardt on Reinhardt battles, if you push the Reinhardt towards your team, he becomes a really easy target to take care of, and it's almost like the hook from Roadhog, but not quite as good because you are at a more uh, disadvantage being near the team, but with Lucio being so fast, it kind of works out in its favor. Another thing to take advantage of is also try to follow your DPS around. Keep following your Genji, your soldier, keep them healed up and give them that speed boost they need, kind of doing that duo process of just running around the map and taking care of everyone as much as you can, because really find that carry, per the, someone that's carrying your team. There's always that one person. Try to find that person, stay with them a lot, and just help them out as much as you can, because Lucio helping out any teammate is just fantastic. He was great with Roadhog when it came to hooks before the nerf, unfortunately, but he's still great with every other character in the game as well. So next up we're going to be talking about Zenyatta, the only character in the game that doesn't make footstep noise, which is good and bad depending on what side he's on. But besides that, I found Zen to be pretty much good on any single map. There's not too many points where he just lacks the ability to see down long sights or he, where he can't heal his teammates or throw a discord orb on. So really when it comes to map picking, I wouldn't say there's anything that uh, Zenyatta would falter on. But something that I did notice that people do a lot that's kind of annoying is, for example, let's say you call out Discord. You say you throw it on the Tracer. Then they remove it two seconds later. You need to keep the Discord on that character as long as possible. Obviously, you know, it does go away eventually, but don't keep switching it back and forth. Focus on a character, tell your team, let them focus on that, get the kill, move to the next one. Simple process. And the same with the Harmony, Harmony Orb. Don't throw it on your McCree with 50 health, heal him up to 120, and then throw it on someone else. Now, of course, if someone is about to die, that's fine. But the thing is, you're giving the McCree the uh, option of, oh, now I'm, I have health, I'm not going to die, I can go in and be a little more, more risky. But a lot of times, they'll just end up not getting their full heals, and then they'll get shot from it and die. It's just it's a whole big mess. Try to focus and trust your team. Give them the Harmony Orb, let them heal up, switch it on over to someone else. Focus on the characters jumping in as well. Give them the Harmony Orb so they can get healed up while they're going in, such as Genji or Tracer, and it just helps out in the long run. Don't just immediately start switching it back and forth unless it's really, really necessary. Now also, spam your right click. Hold that thing almost a full charge every single time and just spam it when you think players are coming in. You can easily snag a quick kill sometimes or just build your ultimate because your Zenyatta's uh, ultimate is one of the best in the games and it can really turn the tide of a fight. So the more often you have it and the faster you can get it, the better off your team is. So you need to do more and more damage. And I'm sure many of you already know this, but I just thought I'd include this in here as well. Zenyatta is great for ca countering Pharah Mercy, or Pharmacy, I guess you could say. If you discord one of them and you have your team focus, it's so much easier for the soldier to take him out and uh, to be able to negate the heals of the Mercy as well. And last thing, Zenyatta is very weak by himself. A monkey can easily dive him and get, uh, kill him. No problem at all. So try to stay with your team as much as you can. I know that can be difficult at times, especially during the dive meta, but try to pick one character to stay with. Maybe you have a soldier on your team or maybe you have an off tank. Stick with them and see if they can help protect you and keep you alive. That's where divas come in handy. They can really keep Zenyatta's alive. 
and mainly focus on using uh, Zenyatta when you really need to get some extra DPS on the team. That is a great way to uh, incorporate him into the team as well. So you can focus on tanks and take them out with Discord Aura because that 30% really, really makes a difference. So now I wanted to talk about Mercy. And to be honest, she's probably one of my least favorite heroes within the game. But she's in the game, so we need to talk about it. So yeah. The main thing you need to remember when using this character is if you're not using res effectively, switch. She is useless if you are not using your resurrection the way it is intended to be. And that is not necessarily every single time you need to get a five or a four man res. Sometimes two people is all you need to turn the tide of a fight, so use it. You get it back incredibly quickly, just use it to your advantage whenever necessary because it really will help out the team. And as we all know, she is a great character with Farrah and Soldier, especially when you're using um, those characters on high ground maps, such as like Numani Point A on defense. If you can get around fast enough, like use your ability to go fly up to Farrah, down to the high ground, back and forth, it keeps you from getting shot. It's a lot harder for people to hit you, and that's what makes her very effective on those kind of maps and how people survive so long, and they actually hold that uh, full hold point. A mistake I also see a lot of people make is they'll rush towards their Winston, for example, or a teammate that's uh, pushed in too far, and they're basically just going to die, and there's nothing you can do about it. Don't get yourself killed as well. Stay back with your team, let that character die, and then hopefully you can be able to get a res off and maybe even save the fight. But it all depends. Like In those situations, things can change. But just remember that. Don't jump in and get yourself killed as well. Also, don't be afraid to use your pistol. I feel like no one ever uses Mercy's pistol, and obviously you don't do that if you need to be healing your team, but if there's an occasion where you can just shoot down line of sight and get a few extra percent on your alt charge from doing some damage, I would just go for it. It doesn't really hurt that much, and it doesn't take long to switch back and forth. So take advantage of that, and maybe you even get a kill out of it. Another thing to mention is there's a lot of Mercy mains right now in Season 5, and it seems to become a repetitive issue. Mercy is not always the best healer to pick. None of them are always the best healer to pick. It's very, very situational, and it depends on your team. So if you're someone that specifically only plays Mercy, you really should learn to try to play something else because there might be something that could actually help your, better, help your team better and actually give you a chance of winning. Because sometimes Resurrect isn't it. It's easily countered a lot of times by teams if by just following up another ultimate. So just remember that. Practice with other characters. At least one more, maybe Ana or Zenyatta. And it'll definitely, definitely help out your playstyle and increase your SR over time. So we're down to our last support hero for the day. And Symmetra, of course, is probably the most debatable one. People don't feel like she should be in the support class, but it doesn't really matter because she is. But at the same time, you never, ever want to play three support with Symmetra. At least I've never seen a situation where that worked out well. Maybe it has for you, but I don't see it being beneficial. If you're going to run a support, make sure you run a Symmetra and then either a Mercy or an Ana. Because the other Zenyatta and Lucio are secondary healers. You need a main healer with a Symmetra to support your team if you want to have any chance of survival. Symmetra is also a very, very difficult uh, character to use on offense. I know people do it. There are Symmetra mains out there, and there's nothing you can ever do about it. But going into every single game with random teammates makes it difficult to use her offensively very good. There are a few people out there that can do it, but I would never recommend it. It's usually very difficult to place teleporter down to where it's beneficial to your team. Usually it becomes an easy target to take care of. And then the same with your shield generator as well. I wouldn't recommend her for King of the Hill maps either. The same argument here. It's just there's too much going on. It's just as soon as you lose the fight, it's easily taken out and destroyed. It's just she's a very, very debatable character on how she actually is going to work. I feel like she needs to be used only on point A defenses on, you know, two CP maps or on a uh, hybrid map, for example, like I can watch, you can actually be very beneficial there and actually make it so you can hold the first point A. I've seen it happen so many times in pro matches and on Twitch as well. I would also recommend switching from her if you notice the enemy team has a tracer. For some reason, it seems like tracer just puts all her priority on the teleporter right as soon as it goes down and you could easily lose any effect that you had from it just because of this one simple character. So to easily get around that, just switch to another healer and it'll most likely help your team out much more. Last thing I wanted to point out was stick to your corners and use your shield effectively to help yourself from getting killed when you're actually chasing people. She does an incredible amount of damage and if you don't have to aim, it makes it easy to go, easy to get kills. And also if you're not getting your ult fast enough, especially before you die the first time, right after that death, you just need to switch. She's basically useless now because you're going to lose the first point. If you're lucky, you might save it. But it's just, it's not going to be beneficial in the long run. I would recommend just switching afterwards unless your team coordinates with you and says, stay as Symmetra, we need the teleporter, and then that's final. So thank you guys for watching the whole video. I hope you enjoyed it and you did learn something from it. I couldn't cover everything. There is so much material regarding these characters. I can make a 30, 40 minute video talking about all of them in depth for every single map and what you should and shouldn't do. 
But the main point here was to get across my suggestions for these type of characters and how they can work better with your team. So I hope you did get something out of that. And I also forgot to mention, but in the description, I'm going to be leaving five different Twitch channels for what I would say are mains for each of these characters. They play this individual character a lot. So you can go on over there, watch them, and actually learn from them. These are pro players. They're very good at what they do. And that's how I seem to learn best. Watching someone else perfect their skill makes me get better after practicing over time. Because that's really all you're going to have to do is you're going to have to practice these characters more and more. And of course, you'll get better at it. So thanks for watching. And of course, like I said at the beginning of the video, like if you did enjoy this kind of content, and I will definitely bring more coming in the near future for all the other classes in the game. So take care. and I'll talk to you later.